Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Beautiful Sunday. Good Shepherd Sunday is just one of those Sundays with all these beautiful hymns, beautiful imagery that we just love as the church. The Latin name for it just, just summarizes it perfectly. Misericordius Domine, the steadfast love of the Lord. It fills the earth. And that's what we see with the Good Shepherd. That's this beautiful image that God gives us of who he is to us. Good and a shepherd. It's beautiful. That imagery of Psalm 23, he leads us into that green grass. He makes us lie down like on a beautiful spring day when the green grass is finally high and you can just lay in it and it's nice and soft. He sits us next to still waters. He restores our soul. Beautiful. It's what we want to think of in the springtime as the school year gets to be just about done and we're tired of, of this work and this labor that we could just be that sheep that Jesus takes and he could just say, all right, go, sit down, here's some food before you, here's this beautiful water that you can sit by, you're nourished, you're cleansed, and you're mine. And that's beautiful and it's correct. Jesus is that good shepherd who comes and he finds that lost weak sheep and he picks it up in that parable of the lost sheep, leaves the 99 to go after the one as that good shepherd who risks everything to climb and to find that one who is lost, to pick it up, put it on its shoulders and carry it home. And as he carries it home, everyone, all of his friends, all the family rejoices. All of the angels rejoice over the one sinner who is brought in repentance back to this forgiveness that that good shepherd gives to us. And that's beautiful, and it's right, and it's what all of our readings talk about, except for Ezekiel messes it up for us. And you kind of get mad at him for it. Here we have this beautiful imagery of Good Shepherd Sunday. And Ezekiel, he starts off really correct with his sermon, talking about how God is going to be this shepherd and what he is going to do, and how God says, you know what, I myself... I'm going to be the shepherd. I'm going to do this. I am going to do that. I will seek the lost. I'll bring back the strayed. I'll bind up the injured. I'll strengthen the weak. And I wish Ezekiel would just stop there. Because then it's a nice, easy sermon. Then it's a nice, beautiful imagery for us to go home feeling good about. That yes, Jesus is that good shepherd. He binds us up. He takes us. He carries us. He forgives us. He puts us, he gives us a table of his love, his forgiveness, his feast in front of us, and that's nice. But that's not where Ezekiel ends. Ezekiel says this instead. He says, this is the words of the Lord. He says, I will seek the lost, I'll bring back the strayed, I'll bind up the injured, I'll strengthen the weak, and the fat and the strong, I will destroy not really the image you want of Good Shepherd Sunday, is it? The fat and the strong I'll destroy. And that's how, how he ends it. That isn't really how our hymns end it. Our hymns end it with that, that beautiful imagery. No, he's our Good Shepherd. And our hymns are absolutely right. And sermons that talk about the Good Shepherd in that way are absolutely right. Except for this fact. We leave here with like a little wood chip in our shoe on the way out of recess. This little word of God from Ezekiel that sits there and it gnaws at you. What in the world does he mean that he will destroy the fat and the strong? How is that a good shepherd? Well, actually it is. A good shepherd in the worldly sense does this and destroys some of its sheep. It calls the flock to make them stronger. A good shepherd looks at the weak and the injured and the lame and says, there's not enough grass for everybody. And so we'll destroy and cut off the weak, the injured, the lame, so that my flock can be as strong as it can possibly be. There's limited resources and all these things. And that's what a shepherd does. A shepherd calls the flock. And this is how we talk about hunting. We need to call the deer population, make things good, and that's nice because that means we get to hunt and we get to have deer. But that's what a good shepherd does. A good shepherd calls the flock, destroys part of it, takes it out. And that's what Ezekiel tells us the good shepherd is going to do. That's what God tells us he's going to do. Except for he flips it. And that's where we start to see this image of the good shepherd. The good shepherd is not one that destroys the weak and the injured. Who does he destroy? 
well, the fat and the straw. The normal practice of culling a flock, again, is to take out the wheat, take out the injured, and leave that good grass and the pleasant pastures and the still waters and that table in the presence of, of all of our enemies, to leave that for the good, the strong, the powerful sheep. Jesus does things differently, though. Jesus says, no, the weak, those ones I came for. Those ones I'm going to pick up. Those ones I am going to carry on my shoulders and I'm going to nurse back to health and I am going to take care of. The injured, those are the ones that I'm going to take and I am going to nurse and I am going to take care of. The weak, those are the ones that I'm going to take and I'm going to strengthen them with my word, with my sacraments, with all of the forgiveness I give. But the fat and the strong, those I'll destroy. Why? Because the fat and the strong don't realize what a gift they have in the shepherd. The fat and the strong take pride in who they are. And that can be us in many ways. We can think we've got everything figured out. And the problem is when we think we have everything figured out, when we think, yes, I'm a far better Christian than all these other bums next to me, that is when we fall. And that's what Ezekiel is talking about. He's talking to the shepherds of his flock, the priests, the teachers at that time who were taking advantage of the weak, and he's warning them to shape up and to realize it's not about them taking advantage of the weak. That in fact, God comes not for the strong, but he comes for the weak. And so what does he do? He takes the prideful, the arrogant, and he thankfully allows us to become humble, and he strikes us down. The shepherds during Ezekiel's time, they were taking advantage of the weak. And so what does God do? He humbles them. And this is what we see he does with his saints throughout his time too. Peter, if there was ever a sheep that was bold and confident and fat and strong, it's St. Peter. As he's there and Jesus tells him, Peter, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to the cross and I'm going to suffer and I'm going to die and on the third day be raised. And Peter says, no, Lord, you do not need to do that. We are fat and strong enough of ourselves. I will die with you before I forsake you. And then God takes Peter in his arrogance and he destroys him and he humbles him. As Jesus there at the cross is suffering in his place and as people ask Peter in that courtyard, do you know this man? And Peter says, no, no, I don't know him. I do not know the man and calls down the curse upon himself and the rooster crows and Jesus looks at that strong, fat sheep that has been destroyed. And Peter goes out and he weeps bitterly. Peter was a good, strong, fat sheep. Fat sheep don't understand what a gift they have in the shepherd. And so Peter is humbled. And he goes out and weeps. But then there is the brilliance of what God does. He goes and he seeks out after that lost sheep, Peter who goes out and weeps bitterly and who now knows there is nothing he can do to stand up for Jesus on himself. There's nothing he is going to contribute to his salvation. And that's the beautiful picture we have of us being sheep. Sheep, they don't have anything to offer. We, we don't have anything to offer for our salvation either. It's not that we've figured it out. It's not that we live a better life than the person next to us or down the street. The only strength we have is a shepherd. As Luther once said, the only thing you contribute to your salvation is your sin and your resistance to the gospel. But Jesus comes and he breaks down through that and he picks up a weak, wounded sheep like Peter, like you, like me, and he binds us up. And he carries that weak, wounded sheep who is wounded by the law, who looks at the Ten Commandments critically and says, you know what, I don't do those things. There is nothing within me that deserves the grace of God or his forgiveness or his protection. And Jesus comes to that weak, broken sheep and he picks it up and he says, you're mine. And he takes that sin of that weak, broken sheep and he goes to the cross and he bears it for us. You, the broken down sheep, me as well. Thanks be to God, we have a good shepherd. A shepherd who comes after us in our brokenness. A shepherd who rides into Jerusalem because we cannot. A shepherd who goes to the cross for us as that lamb in our place because we 
cannot pay the debt of our sins. And instead of bringing down his wrath upon us, he just gives you his grace. And he says, I don't care that you're weak, that you're injured, that maybe even you're worthless in the world's eyes. To me, you are worth dying for, and you are precious in my sight. That's the good shepherd. We don't realize what a good shepherd we have until we realize the place that we are as sheep. But then we see that we have a good shepherd that lays down his life for us. And he wants us to hear his voice, not ours. Not ours saying, I will never deny you like Peter said, or Lord, I'll die with you rather than see you die on my behalf. But sheep that hear Jesus say, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I forgive you all of your sins. And take and eat, this is my body and my blood given and shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. It's not about us as sheep doing things for the shepherd. It's all about the shepherd saying, this is what I have done for you. And he comes and he picks you up. And he brings you into his flock, the church. The church is not a place for the strong and the fat. For those who have figured out life and live a perfect one. The church is a place for the weak. For those broken by their sin, Jesus says, here is your home. Luther said the the best definition of a church is this, holy believers and sheep who hear the voice of their shepherd. The voice of the shepherd that doesn't say do this and do that, but says this is what I've done for you. I baptize you. I forgive you. And I give you my body and blood for the forgiveness of your sins. That's the good shepherd we have the good shepherd that we celebrate this day. He has done everything we need to not fear. He has suffered for our sins. He's gone into that grave. He's came out of that grave, and our shepherd leads us. And we know we can follow him wherever he goes. He has died for you, and he lives for you. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. And may this peace of God that surpasses all of our understanding, may it guard and keep your hearts and your minds in Jesus Christ, your Lord. Amen.